God's good? All the time. At all the time? God is good. We have an announcement. I haven't set the date yet, uh, so I'll clear it, but it will be in January on Monday night, 5 p.m. We're going to be hosting at Bethany a meeting with our new chief police. <laughs> and also for the community to get to know who our chief is, but also we're having a drug coalition in for Cambria County, and they're gonna do a presentation. How many of you even know what these drugs look like today? I don't. And uh, there's a lot of uh, problems in our community, and uh, they're gonna sort of bring us up to speed what the, the scourge is. And uh, you know how to identify, how to get people help, and um, <clears throat> I'll be putting out a flyer on that as soon as I get things nailed down. But it will be this January that will be at Bethany. And this Wednesday we have our charge conference, and six o'clock will be at the BPR. I'm assuming that'll be downstairs. And then our regular charge conference will be at six thirty here at the sanctuary. So. Any other announcements we can share? How does Laura do?
indeed the word of God is living and active, active than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from spirit, joints from marrow, <coughs> and is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of God, the people of God. In our hands are holy, holy, and the Lord of Christians.
time to wait for you the morning offer.
So I'll be crying from Winchester to New Jersey. <laughs> so does someone make it there? You want to take your basis for support? We're going to clean, and I don't think she's going to come help. <laughs> okay. Any others? Yeah. We're crying mercies. And Pat and Ron are going to Florida, right? We're going to, North, to South Carolina. South Carolina. Not anymore. And pray that Pat and Chris will be released from her camp. And that's not in Grace, right? I want to thank the Lord for traveling. Our police had just came back from South Carolina. My granddaughter got married down there, but we also visited her on the beach. And that was a long ride. <laughs> Angelito is having back surgery on Wednesday, and he would appreciate our prayers. Who's having back surgery? Angelito. Angelito. Unspoken. Okay. Unspoken. Any others? What's a crazy? Marshall got to have one of his bucket list items checked off. He went on a date with Kathy on the turnpike. You want to know what one of my bucket list things are? That song we just sang, You'll Know We're Christians. I tried to play that on the guitar for a charge conference one time. It was terrible. <laughs> my bucket list would be able to play that in front of the church before I retire. So we'll see. Um, of course, I haven't been playing the guitar for a year, so it's going to be a challenge, but yeah, I want to get back to it. So, any others? Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for life. And life is so fragile, it needs to be handled with prayer. We thank you, Lord, for one's presence. We pray, Lord, your blessing and strength be upon him. If the Catherine, she goes for her knee surgery, we're praying, Lord, you be a part of she both. Praying, Lord, that she'd be able to soon return to her own home. We lift up Jackson as he recovers at home. And we're praying, Lord, to be with Sandy. Pray, Lord, that you be with her as so she's on the highway, but also greeting and, and being with family. Pray for Ron Pat as they travel. We thank you, Lord, for, for being with Margaret as she comes home from her travels. And we pray for, for Kathy. Lord, if this be dying grace in us, what we pray, pray for that you release her from her pain and understand your presence. We pray for Angelito as he goes for his surgery, and we have many unspoken requests. You know what they are. So we pray, the Lord, for all these things. But we also lift up for our denomination, our church. We pray, the Lord, that you would be with us as we continue to try to be faithful where you plan us. We pray, the Lord, however, that uh, you might cause an excitement to come upon the people of this land. Once again, they would turn their faces to see yours. Pray all in Christ's holy name. And now we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth. <coughs> give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust in us against us. Lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil, for the is the kingdom. And power and the Lord forever. Amen. In our canvas, page 128, he
setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these sins in my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to my one thing, Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you own treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. For they were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals this, it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. And Peter began to say to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sisters or mother or father or, father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last be first. In all of the TV sitcoms that I've ever, I grew up with this stuff. Everybody remember Perry Mason? It's still on BTV. Um, um, you know, just about all of them, they, they, you got this guy, he's always looking real sober, and I think they call him a bailiff or something, but he comes out and he holds this Bible and he says to him in this ominous voice, he promised the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God. I have never heard anyone with their hand on the Bible say no. Although we know people on the witness stand often bend the truth a little bit, if not just downright lying uh, through their teeth. Now I suspect that if they ever did say no on Perry Mason, they'd get clapped in jail right away. The reality is, when you're in court, they don't even bring out a Bible anymore. Um, and I guess that's, of course, because people no longer think it's God's work. In fact, they don't even think there's a God um, in any segments of our society. But be that as it may, in this post-Christian age, um, by human standards, truth is a very messy thing. I mean, consider Pilate when Jesus was brought before him. Pilate, therefore, entered again into Praetorium and saw him Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative? Or did others tell you about me? And Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests delivered you up to me. Now what have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not in this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting, that I might not be delivered up to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Pilate therefore said to him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? Now, Pilate is no fool. How many times has he seen some convicted person stand before him pleading his case? And every time they always said, I didn't do it. And every time they said, I didn't do it, he had to decide for himself who was telling the truth. The guy in front of him pleading for his life or the other people that were accusing him of some terrible you know, crime. Now, it must have come as quite a shock. Uh, I think it actually unnerved him a little bit to see Jesus standing before him and not begging for his life, not even hinting that his accusers were just a pack of low-down liars. Jesus didn't do that. He was the truth. And as he stood before Pilate, he, he truthfully stood there unafraid. And this so unnerved Pilate, 
he tried to release him. We know from the scripture that also his wife uh, didn't want him to have anything to do with you know, Jesus. She, she had a dream about him. But before, he'd been taken from his disciples, you know, after the Last Supper, there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus made this amazing statement to Thomas, well, to the rest of them as well. Jesus said, I'm the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. On the other side of the resurrection, it's the writer to the Hebrews that has this remark. He says, indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from spirit, joints from marrow, and is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. By human standards, it's often very difficult to pick out the truth from all the different shades of gray all around us. I mean, lying deceit, it, it's everywhere. I mean, we're steeped in it from the moment we wake up to the moment we fall asleep. And if we aren't on our guard, we'll fall prey to somebody's deceit and lies. How many of you screen your phone calls? I only see like three or four brave people. I mean, I do. I think Marianne Long, I mean, she must have supported every charity on the planet. Because I get, I don't know how many phone calls every week. And not only that, but I also get these, these pranksters. I call them pranksters. They're shysters. And they keep calling, and what do they want? Well, they want some personal information that they can use to exploit. I can remember one day, the same guy called within five minutes of each other. They kept trying to get my son's social security number. I mean, what's up with this? But that's just the danger of our days. But it's not this way with our God. God is not only love, but God is also truth. And God is the only way we're ever going to navigate this minefield we call life. In this culture, <clears throat> as well as any other culture, any time in the world's history, it's been very hard to keep from straying from the narrow way that leads to everlasting life. And even although we know in our heart that Jesus is the only way, still there's other ways they seem so appealing. Have you ever tried any of those magical diets? They got one out there now that says you only eat until a certain time of the day, then you're guaranteed to lose weight. Well, I got another one that I know works. Just quit eating, period. Of course, you'll get sick and you'll die, but you know, uh, you will lose weight. I mean, but they got these, these things. I mean, eat just meat. For a guy, that sounds like awesome. And then you got to pay for it. I mean, if you look at the price of beef, you know, even at Walmart, I mean, and some of it's got little green edges on it. Mean, um, but, you know, it's there. Like, 100 bucks a pound. Um, but they got all these different things that they, they promise so much. God alone has the word of life. The way of real and everlasting joy, as well as satisfaction with their own lives. Now, this world... People who have lied and cheated their way up the ladder of success for a dime a dozen. I mean, it happens everywhere. But if you look deep enough into their lives, what you'll discover is there's an emptiness. There's almost always an emptiness. If they're not there then, it'll, it'll be there eventually. Um, it's just kind of depressing. And even although the grass may always look greener on the other side of the fence, anybody who truly uh, has Jesus in their heart to be a colossal fool, to hunger and thirst for the way of the world instead of God's way. And that's why a proverb like 3, 5 uh, through 10 speaks so deeply to our spirits. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be healing for your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of your produce, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with wine. Now, seriously, who amongst us would like to be in the shoes of that rich young boy? Um, as he was setting out on a journey, this is Jesus. 
a man runs, runs up and kneels before him asking, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, You know, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Um, and he said, Well, you know, we you know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you not steal, not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. And the man interrupts Jesus and says, Teacher, teacher, I, I've done all this from the time I was, you know, very young. And uh, Jesus looked at him, and he smiles, I'm sure. And he said, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. And then, come and follow me. And when he heard this, he went away shocked because, he was grieving because he had many possessions. And then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, a heart will be for those who have wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. I mean, this guy is a prince beyond all measure. I mean, in life, and, and we're not told whether it's through shrewd business dealings or more likely probably inherited his, his cash. I mean, this guy is at the top of the food train. By human standards, he's got it all. Yet deep down inside, he knew something was wrong, or, there's something missing. And so when he comes to Jesus, he is not expecting Jesus to tell him to sell off all his possessions. What he's expecting is probably some positive reinforcement. I mean, he came to Jesus, he, he had a stack deck with him. Um, yet Jesus loved this guy enough to be brutally honest. This guy's love of wealth, his affinity for a position in society, that's what was destroying his life. That's what was holding him back spiritually. No one else had ever told him anything like what Jesus did. Most of the people he knew probably told him something he didn't want him to hear because they wanted to remain in his good graces and probably profit from that cozy, you know, ways. But God alone is all we should ever desire. And the rest will simply, you know, come all by itself. Um, the Lord has a plan for every one of our lives. And when we let go and we let God, things will start moving a whole lot more easily, a lot more efficiently. In Matthew 6, we find some really good advice about our real priorities. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you'll have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. And when you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they might be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have a reward in full. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret may repay you. And when you pray, you're not to pray, not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues on the street corners, in order to be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have the reward full, but you. When you pray, go to your inner room, and when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. Your father who sees the secret will repay you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition, as the Gentiles do, for they suppose will be heard you know, through their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you even ask him. Now, in our lesson from Mark's Gospel, Peter asked the question that had been on all their minds, ever since I called about how rich people can enter into the kingdom. You know, following Jesus around the countryside, um, it wasn't getting bills paid. By not manning the fishing boats, by not being there in the tax booth, there wasn't a lot of income coming in. And Peter wanted to know what was really in it, you know, for them. And Peter began to say to him, look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brother, sisters, mother, father, or children, or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. Following Jesus is difficult. Sticking to our principles, particularly in this post-Christian era, um, it's going to be hard. A lot of people are going to be downright insulted by our message, by our values, if we hold to them. 
But in the age to come, it'll be so much worth it. I mean, what price can any of us pay or place on that mansion that we get to enjoy for all of eternity in God's presence? I mean, what price can we pay to hear those comforted words? Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. What price is going to be paid by those who here instead depart from me? I never knew you. Only God is worthy of praise. Only God is worthy to be worshipped. And it's only through Jesus that we have access to God's presence. Now, in these last days, many false prophets are on the horizon. We've already dealt with quite a few. But in these last days, people are quite fixated on loving themselves. In these last days, there are many who are going to turn their hearts away from God and away from His people. In the last days, many people are going to fall away from God. Now, our task as a church is simply to love God more than we love ourselves and begin living like it. And our God will take care of all the rest. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, worldly wisdom says, get it well, and it's are easy. But you say, trust in you. Do things according to your holy word, your holy law, you implant in our hearts. This thing called lunches. This thing called there's some lunch just on the cross. In our day and age, it's like we're trying to please people. And we forget our law. Trying to please you. Help us to your eyes back on the narrow, narrow track that leads to everlasting life. Help us to be more of a movement in this world that leads people back into the very presence of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our God. In his name we pray. Amen. And our hymn is Pass It On. I double dog Gary to see if you can sing this without praying. <laughs>
back just a little bit of joy and a little bit of enthusiasm because our God is with us each and every step of the way. Amen? Amen. Okay, and our blessing.